Today I'm here to give my prediction and speculation for episode 15 of The Walking Dead titled This Sorrow Life. Now, this episode will be more about redeeming Merle and it also will be about the war that's about to happen. And I think the war is going to take place during, well, at least close to the end of the episode. If you get what I'm saying. Ain't no one in the world that have the war going on in the middle. Didn't stop. I mean, they got to have some kind of big cliffhanger. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely see them having this war towards the end. And also, like I say about this episode, will be about redeeming Merle. Or at least trying to redeem him. Also, on the Talking Dead, they say that Sunday we will have a special guest on the show. Now, 99% of the time when they say, when they mention a special guest for the Talking Dead, most likely somebody going to die in the episode. Sometimes they don't, but most likely a character does end up dying and they be a special, and they be a special guest on the Talking Dead. Y'all know I'm not lying. <laughs> so, now let me talk about Rick trading in Michonne. Now, this is what right here why I don't get. Okay, Rick knows the governor is lying, but he wants peace so bad he's willing to uh, he's willing to ignore. The fact that the governor is lying about Michonne. He know he's lying in general. But deep down inside. Deep down. Well in the back of his head. He wants to give up Michonne. It is revealed in, it's, it's revealed in, in this promo. He wants to give her up. Because deep down inside. About, about the Michonne part. He thinks the governor is telling the truth. Now. I, under, I can understand Rick wants peace because think about it. Rick is always a man who always look forward to a future. Now, let me explain this a little bit. Okay. Even in a zombie apocalypse, even, even in that a zombie, even in that a zombie apocalyptic world they live in, it, Rick has always tried to build a future in that world. Rick, Rick is a man of hope. If anybody else don't have hope, Rick has it. Because in season one, when Rick found the CDC lab, he thought he found a gold mine with Dr. Jenner. But it's revealed it's revealed that the CDC lab was going to blow up, and it did blow up. Season two, Rick doubt, he, he thought he found a gold mine when he found Hershel was born because he tells the group that they, he tells the group that they can build a future there. Like, I'm, like I say, Rick is always trying to look for something long term. Season 3, he finds the prison. Now, if you pay attention to Rick's face when he finds that prison, you can see him smiling because he sees hope. He sees future. He sees a future at that prison. And he and also he mentions and he does tell a group about the prison. He mentioned that he mentions that the prison has food, it has supplies. He's always a man that's, that, that's looking for something to build a future. Even in that world they live in, he still have hope. And I can understand, I can understand him from one standpoint, but the other one I can't because he know the governor is lying. But he's still willing to sacrifice this woman. Now, I can see if he didn't know her, and even still if he didn't know her, it's still wrong to sacrifice her. But still, he knows this woman. This woman has, has helped him out on multiple occasions. She even saved Herschel's life. Now think about it. If the group didn't have Herschel, where do you think that group would be right now? The group would be definitely unbalanced. I can tell you that for a fact. Because Herschel is the force of reason. He's the only person, he's the only person that's keeping that group together. So I, I, I don't get it. Like I say, he could he could use Michonne. He could tell her, you know what, I'm gonna let you go with the governor and pull it and keep well keep a knife in the keep a knife in, well keep a knife in your back pocket. So when I see you to the governor, you could you could stab him or something to finish him out and kill him. But that's I don't think that's the case. He's really considering about trading this girl. And like I say, from one standpoint, I can understand that because he's tired of running. He he he, he wants peace. 
he wanted to be he want he wanted to be able to live with, with 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 him and the rest of the people in his group without any drama without stuff in general. But overall, like I say, when it when it all boils down to it, Rick is being selfish. That's the only way you can see it. He's willing to trade another human being that he know of. He know this woman. In order for him to be able to in order for him to be able to maintain peace. He's being selfish. And that makes him no better than the governor. Because what the governor does, he kills people for power. Well, he kills people in order for him to maintain his authority and power. So that makes him no better than the governor. That makes him no better that makes him no better than Merle Dixon. Because Merle Dixon used to do that type of stuff. And, th- and when Merle te- told him that, it makes sense. When it, when Merle tells him, you're no better than me. Basically, basically, that's how he put it. You're no better than me, Mr. Mr. Um, Alpha, Mr. Officer Friendly. He say, he, and he also say, he, he also said that he says that your code is ice. So, yeah. Next. I want to talk about Michonne. Not Michonne, but Andrea. I definitely see Milton saving Andrea. Because think about it. Everybody else in Woodbury is scared to question to, to question the governor. Everybody. I mean, even if the governor would have told Martinez in the previous episode that, yeah, I got Andrea in the back of my truck and I'm about to go torture her, do you think Martinez would have questioned the governor about that? No, he would have never questioned him. Deep down inside, he would have wanted to because I think Martinez does have... um. His, I think Martinez, he does have his humanity. I can't deny that because, like I say, he care about it, but he, but, but then again, he's not going to say them because he's scared. Because he knows how man the governor truly is. So, of course, he's not going to say anything, but he knows it's wrong. But even if the governor would have told him, like I say, he wouldn't have said that. They even go for Shumper. Shumper knows it's wrong, but do you think Shumper would have spoke up about it? No. That's how I know Milton, Milton is Milton's going to save her, possibly, because Milton was the only person that really questioned the governor about what he was doing. Because he didn't want to question the governor in the previous episode, telling him about the torturing thing he was doing, and he also told him about killing Rick and his group. He questioned him about it, and the governor got mad. And like I say, he had the guts to, he had the guts to go burn them walkers up in that in, well, well, in that bottle pit. He had the guts to do that because he knew it was wrong. So, with that being with that being done, I think he's going to save Andrew because he know he knows where that room is at, the torture room the governor is using. And like I say, him and him and Andrea has built a relationship now. They got a relationship, not not no not no um, romantic relationship, but they got one now. I mean, is I mean they, they they got a good friendly relationship, but also this could end up getting Milton killed because the governor, the governor already, the governor is already on to Milton already. He know Milton was the one who burnt those zombies up in that in the, in the biters, in that biters pit. So this right here is going to give him more reasons to want to have Milton killed because he's going to realize that Milton is not with me no more. He already know he already know Milton did it to them zombies already, so. Yeah, but I definitely see Milton saving Andrew. Cause like I say, don't nobody else want to uh, go against the governor. And I, so far, you can see Milton has did it. Although he snuck and burnt them zombies up, he still went against went went against them. Next, let's talk about the next preview promo we seen with Glenn talking to Daryl. And you can see uh, that that Glenn is Glenn, that Glenn is trying to repair um them prison bars. That was in the prison courtyard. Now, that same prison courtyard we see Daryl and Glenn talking in is the same prison courtyard that Rick had locked Andrew up outside in and left Andrew outside for dead and left him outside with them zombies to be eaten alive. That's the same prison courtyard. Now, what I can't understand, how is those prison um those, those prison the prison bars destroyed? I mean, you can you can obviously you can tell you can tell you can tell it they, they've been torn apart because you can see Daryl lift, lifting up the other side trying to help trying to help Glenn um get them together so he can lock them up lock them together. I don't get that. 
But then we see uh, Daryl, and Daryl basically asks Glenn, did, did Merle come and apologize for what he did? And Glenn don't want to hear. He's trying to annoy Daryl. And then, and then, uh, and then Daryl tells him he wants to fix it. He wants them to get along. He wants everybody in that prison to get along with his brother. And then Glenn goes on to tell Daryl, maybe if, if maybe if if maybe if if it, if it was him that Merle did everything to, you know, like letting up, letting that zombie in, trying to kill him, beating him to death, well, I almost beat him to death. He say. I could basically mention saying that saying that he could forgive Murrow for that, but then he says he can't because he had took Maggie too, and we already we already know why Glenn is mad about that because the governor was attempting to rape Maggie, and that's the reason why why Glenn is mad, and that's, and that's what he was talking about. And at this point, this this is right here's when I, when I question Glenn because Glenn know himself. He know when you live in a zombie world. Well, he know when you're living in that type of world, that zombie apocalyptic, that zombie apocalyptic world they living in. Life is short, and it's too short to be holding grudges against somebody. Glenn knows this. Glenn' biggest fear in season one, and he said it. He, his biggest fear was dying, and not uh. And not losing his virginity. That was his biggest fear. Or dying and not getting laid. That was his biggest fear. And Glenn knows this. One day you there and the next day you gone. Time is short when it comes to living in the zombie apocalypse. Glenn knows this. But yet he's still holding grudges. I understand what Merle did. What Merle did. Merle is a jerk. True enough. True enough. But he's human. Now, if you want to get technical about forgiving, let's talk about when he loved Merle on that roof. Him, him, uh, who else? Rick and T Dog. Now, Daryl forgave them for what they did. They left his brother on the roof for dead. On top of that, he was handcuffed to a pole. Think about if the zombies would have got to Merle. Don't nobody want to get eaten by no zombies. Alive. That's torture. You have teeth ripping through your flesh. Do you know how painful that could be? I say could because I've never been through it. But I can imagine that could be pretty painful while you're still alive. To me, that's worse than getting raped. And Daryl still forgave them. He even forgave T-Dog and T-Dog dropped the key. Because Daryl knows life is too short. And plus, Daryl was in that group. So he had to deal with them. So he forgave them. Merle is in that group. You don't, and like I say, Glenn don't have to forgive Merle, but at least try to at least try to come to good terms with him. I mean, Merle is trying. You can't say he ain't. I mean, Merle wouldn't talk to Michonne. And he tried to kill Michonne. He he tells Michonne that it wasn't personal, it was just business. He didn't really want to kill her. The governor sent him to kill her. He was just following orders. Like I say, I, I I can't I can't defend I can't defend what he did and, and say he was right. He wasn't, but still, he's still a human being. He made mistakes and even he admitted it. He made mistakes and he's not happy. He's not happy about his mistakes that he made in the past. He's still human, and I feel it. Like, I feel like they, they shouldn't treat him that way. I mean, yo, what he did was wrong, and I ain't denying it. But still, and like Daryl tells him, in order for us, in order for them, in order for them to come to the same ground, where 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 to compromise, it takes two. Merle wants to compromise, but Glenn don't want to compromise. And Daryl realizes, then re, Daryl realizes there's no point in talking to him. He just walks off, and you can see how Glenn looks at Daryl. You can tell the look he gave, he gives Daryl, like, man, I made him mad. Because that's his brother. So let's talk about the uh, the next preview. Though, like I say, they, we ain't do much with they ain't do much with these promos this time. You can't you can't really do much with these promos. I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> Not much you can really do. Okay, we see Rick sitting down, and he sees Lori. 
Now, at this point, it's kind of getting redundant with him seeing Lord. I, I'm sorry, because how can you have a man, this man, and he's the leader of the group, and you try to get him to go to war, but he's still seeing, he's still seeing his dead wife. In order to go to war, you have to be stable. Because, like I say, Oscar died because of that. Because he wasn't stable. He seen Shane, and Shane was already dead. You have to be stable to go to war. And he's unstable. And I feel like the writers are just going overboard with this. With this Rick seeing Lori all the time. It's just, I'm sorry. They're going overboard with it. So, next. Let me go, let me go to this preview promo. Man, I... I, have, I have actually I have forgot about um I, I, I wasn't even on the promo no more. We have got all about it. Next we see Merle tell Rick about what he what, what he's gonna do about Michonne is wrong about giving her up and like I say he calls him officer friendly. He says you're a cold. He said you're, you're uh, he says um you're a cold is ice. Basically basically saying you're no better than me. You are willing to sacrifice her for your freedom, for for uh, for freedom, and you know, you so you can enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. But still, it makes it don't really make no, it don't make no sense to to sacrifice when you know he's not going to kill you anyway. I am looking at the promo right now. I just got to the promo, the promo itself. We see Rick running outside, and like I say, we see Glenn and Daryl talking to each other. About the, about the promo that I just talked about. We give the governor Woodbury stands down. And now, Rick tells Merle that we give the governor Michonne and Woodbury stands down. I talked about that already. I just talked about that. And Merle, Merle tells him. Next, we see a whole bunch of walkers walking. Now, it's, now this right here is going to take... Now, my prediction is... These walkers are coming towards the feed store. Now, the feed store is where the governor told Rick to meet him at in two more days. Well, in, in two more days for the uh, trade for Michonne. Now, remember, that feed store was never stable. It was never stable. Walkers could well, walkers could come to that feed store if they wanted to. And they can. You can see it right here in this promo. I think I think it's where they at. And Daryl tell, tells Merle that we can't do things without people anymore. And Merle tells and Merle tells Daryl, your people look at me like I'm the devil, which is true. Like I say, I feel I actually feel bad for Merle. Because they I mean the way they look at him, and like I say, that that happened. That's that happened in episode seven with Maggie and stuff. And basically Carol just asks Merle who she's with. Who he's with. And it's obvious. Merle is with them because, of course, Daryl is fighting with them, and Merle loves his brother. But who knows? He might change up on the battlefield. But me, I'm saying right now, he's still with them because, like I say, that's his brother. If he wanted, if his brother wasn't there, then he he would have left. I'm pretty sure of that. We can stand, we can fight, or we can go. Rick tells the group they can stay, or they can fight, or they can go. Referring, and he's probably talking about the Michonne thing. Because he don't really, deep down inside, he knows it's wrong to be doing it. But, like I say, if he if he want that peace he's always been seeking through season one and season two, he's going to have to give up. And even then, it's still a lot. But, I don't think he want to do it. But still, he asked the group. So, at least he's attempting. Right? Next we see Merle shoots a gun. Next we see Martinez throw a hand sign. Now it's possible when Martinez throw a hand sign, he was throwing it towards the governor and the rest of the men that the governor is with because he probably see Rick and them coming. Well, Rick and his group coming. And he's and he, and he giving them the sign. Next we see Rick with a gun in his hand. Next we see Michonne at the prison. Now it's possible we see these this we see this one walker coming from the tomb. Remember the tomb while the walkers was coming in through? Yeah. And we see uh, Martinez fire a, a, a hand grenade, well, a rocket launcher, and he destroys the top uh, prison tower. So it's right here with my predictions and stuff. I couldn't do much with this promo, I'm sorry. It wasn't the lack of content, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
and subscribe already, comment, and leave your predictions down below. Tell me what you guys think.